I can't even imagine how it'll be if I got stuck in space. Two astronauts who flew to space and they're stuck. And now originally this space trip was supposed to be for eight days. It turned from eight days to eight months to now possibly a year. There are two NASA astronauts who have been left stranded in space since June. They've been there since fucking June due to Boeing Starliner issues. Yes, the same Boeing with all of the plane problems. As it says, they'll be stuck there until nearly March of next year. They're only supposed to be there for less than a week. Now, can you imagine doing an interview in space? Like you're stranded in space and you're, you're doing an interview from fucking space knowing you're stuck there for potentially the next year. Like you can't come home. You're stuck in space for the next year. These guys did a fucking interview from space. I've never seen nothing like this. Marsha, you know, we've, we've been through a lot of simulations for this spacecraft to, you know, go through all sorts of iterations of failures. And I think where we are right now and what we know right now and how the spacecraft flew as it was coming in to do the docking as Butch described, um, I, I feel confident that if we had to, if there was a problem with the International Space Station, we can get in our spacecraft and we can undock talk to our team and figure out the best way to come home. Um, yeah, we've, like I said, we've practiced a lot, so I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, the spacecraft will, br will bring us home. Here's my thing, like you're stranded in space for a whole fucking year. There's a lot of different stuff that goes into this, bro, that I'm just curious about how they, how do they manage that, you know? Okay, now this is the tour, the, the, this, I think she's the one who's stuck in space right now, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's her, but She's actually given a tour of like where she's sleeping and stuff like that. And she's supposed to be here for till next year. So this is a tour. Really cool module. Um, of course, most of these modules, you'll see they have four sides uh, and they're put together. That way we could sort of wa work on a flat plane, either a wall, a floor, another wall or the ceiling. But, you know, again, all you have to do is turn yourself and your reference changes. Bro, like, you have to do that for a whole year? Like, just really think about this, bro. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, why would you agree to some shit like this? It's because this is where four out of six of us sleep. And so people always ask about sleeping in space. Do you lie down? Are you in a bed? Um, not really, because it doesn't matter. You don't really have the sensation of lying down. You just sit in your sleeping bag. So here's one sleep station right here. I'm going in right now. You can follow me if you want. So I'm inside. It's sort of like a little phone booth, um, but it's pretty comfy. I've got a sleeping bag right here that we sleep in, so we don't have a, sort of like a little bit of a cover. We don't fly all over the place. Um, but you know, you can sleep in any orientation. I have it sleeping, feeling like I'm standing up right now, but like you saw, I'm on the floor, but it doesn't matter if I turn over and I sleep upside down. I can't have it, I don't have any sensation in my head that tells me that I'm upside down, so it really doesn't matter. The sleep station is also like a little office. We've got a computer in here. As you can see, we've got a couple little toys. I've got some books. Bro, I'm sorry, you, you gotta be a little off to do some shit like this. this Y'all don't see how, cr this doesn't look psycho to you, bro. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. Like. And just for reference, that's one sleep station. This one's another right here. There's one on the ceiling, if you want to call it, right here. And then there's a fourth on the other wall over here. So all of us sleep in a little bit of a, a circle. All right, come on back. There's more to show you. I know that there's some questions about how to use the bathroom and how do you actually live in space like normal. Like at home, I mentioned real quickly about getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth and washing your face. Well, how do you do that? Well, here is the bathroom, essentially. You get up in the morning and we have a little kit and it has all the essential things that you need, like your toothbrush and toothpaste and brush. See how See how much better the brush makes my hair look? <laughs> so, like, how would you take a shower? Like, I don't know. I have so many questions, bro. I have so many questions. Joking. It still stands up straight. It doesn't matter where you are. It's always going to stand up straight while you're up in space. 
A lot of people ask about toothbrush and toothpaste. So luckily enough, toothpaste, you can do it upside right this way, is sticky and so it sticks to your toothbrush, no problem. Another cool thing is that water sticks to your toothbrush too. That's kind of cool though. The thing they took to get up there, this is like a detailed thing about that and then I'll break it down a little more. Is orbiting above you right now, traveling at 27,600 kilometers per hour. But in these videos, you can't really tell how quick it's moving. So let's have a look at sea level. If the ISS orbited at just 10,000 feet, it would look something like this. Did you catch it? And if you it's were crazy. an astronaut on board, your view would be something like this. Now, at this speed, the ISS completes one full orbit of the Earth every 90 minutes. It's actually the most expensive anything ever built, costing around $150 billion. Sadly, Damn. by the end of 2030, NASA actually have plans to crash the ISS into the ocean after more than 30 years of operation. I'll actually be chatting with some astronauts about to go off on a mission to the ISS very soon. So if you want to ask them any questions, just drop them in the comments and maybe... <laughs> I think those are the astronauts. They stuck right now, nigga. They don't want no questions. <laughs> that nigga's stuck. Now, the, the former commander, he gave an um, explanation behind, like, the issue they faced. So I'm going to let him break that down. They had, there's, this is the capsule and this is the service module. And in the service module, there's helium. And that's used for the propellant. Uh, they did have some leaks. They closed the valve and it's not leaking anymore. The capsule has a parachute and a heat shield. And the astronauts come back to Earth in this part of the Starliner capsule. The service module um, has these four things. They're called dog houses. There's one there, one there, one there. And in each dog house, there's several small RCS jets and larger OMAX rocket engines. And these small little jets um, control the direction that the capsule points. But the service module, when it separates, it hits the atmosphere going 25,000 kilometers an hour burns up during docking a few of these uh, small rcs jets failed off they were able to get most of them turned back on again but they did have some problems with them but once they separate and this thing burns up they're never going to be able to test it again or have it again so they want to spend as much time on the space station with the two parts together like this i think i think of course the most important thing to look at is the effects it has on your body you know, if you're spending that much time in space, because if they're not walking, there's a lot of shit they're not doing. It has to be dismantling their body slowly. People experience space sickness. So on the ISS or spacecraft that have flown into space, the force of gravity is much weaker than the Earth. As a result, many people show symptoms of space sickness, such as headaches, nausea, vomiting. When on Earth, we're strongly affected by the force of gravity. We have a small organ called the stibular organ deep inside our ears. It plays a key role in keeping our bodies balanced. This organ verts information on gravity and acceleration experienced by the body. In the low gravity of space, the information received from the the vestibular organ is changes. This is thought to confuse the brain, leading to space sickness. Almost like your body adjusts to you being in space, and then when you get back, it adjusts to you not being in space. As weird as that sounds. And then they said, What happens to your body when you spend a long time? So, this is probably what's going to happen to them. Stay for a long time in space, your muscles and bones will weaken, primarily in the legs and lower back. Gravity always acts on you while you're on Earth. So, even if you're not really conscious of resisting gravity, you're always using muscles of your lower body. In space where gravity is very weak, posture can be maintained without standing on your legs and there's no need to use your legs to move about. Muscles weaken and, bo and bone mass decreases if you stay for a long time in space. Therefore, research is underway to verify in space the effects of existing drugs for preventing bone loss by astronauts. Astronauts exercise for about two hours a day during their stay on the International Space Station. I knew I was about to be in space for the next year. I might lose my shit, but I ain't gonna lie. Like, that would be so... I can't even imagine that. Like, you're stuck in... You're stuck in space, nigga? Like, there's nothing. <laughs> you feel me? It's not like... I'd rather be stuck in, like, a random country. I'd be like, okay, I can figure out a way to get to here, here, and then get back home. But, like, nigga, stuck in fucking space? Like, what are you supposed to do if you're stuck in space? You can't jump out the shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing you can do. I don't know, bro. That's crazy. That's that's insane right there. I don't know your thoughts on that. And, um, as always, it's your boy.